Let me read to you a passage from the seventh chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 15 to 20. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the twelfth week in ordinary time, year two. St. Matthew writes, Jesus said to his disciples, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them. That's from Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. And what does it suggest to us? Well, when observed from the outside, Christianity presents some respect, in some respects a very sad spectacle. I'm referring to the manifest disunity of Christians. There are a few great bodies of Christians, the greatest of which is obviously the Catholic Church, but nevertheless the non-Christian sees before him almost countless numbers of Christian communions of various kinds and beliefs. Of course, this is in no way specific to Christianity. Islam, for instance, has numerous distinct groupings, and the Sunni and Shiite conflicts in the Middle East are but one instance. Nevertheless, inasmuch as Christianity brings to the world the person of Jesus Christ, the presentation of Jesus Christ clearly suffers greatly by this Christian disunity. At the Last Supper, Christ prayed to the Father that all his followers would be one. He asked for this so that the world might believe, as he said. And elsewhere in the Gospels, he referred to the divine plan of one fold under one shepherd. Now what is it that has brought upon the church this tragic disunity? Well, obviously, it has been due, in large measure, to the rise of various voices calling the faithful to accept this or that doctrine and to follow this or that practice that the church in one way or another condemns. The new voices believe that the condemnation is erroneous, and so the division deepens. We read in the New Testament writings solemn warnings, for instance in the letters of St. Paul and of St. John, against the divisions arising from false doctrine, meaning by wrong doctrine teachings that are contrary to that of the apostolic witness. We see the same pattern and problem in the rise of Gnosticism in the early church and again in the great heresy of Arianism following the Council of Nicaea in the early 4th century. A heresy that lasted the whole century. Indeed, Arius, a priest, contradicted the doctrine that the man Jesus is divine. Despite its condemnation in one form, form or another, this heresy lasted for centuries. And there have been denials of numerous other doctrines over the centuries, and more often than not, these denials are accompanied by appeals to Scripture and by an upright character, an upright life, and evident sincerity in the ones who are maintaining the denials. Whether the followers are many or few, the result is further division. These are the historical facts. But let us turn to our Lord's words in the Gospel of today that I read earlier. He tells his disciples to watch out for false prophets. They can be very convincing. While in the sight of God they are wolves, in the sight of man they can appear to be sheep, with sheep's clothing, as he says. They can seem to be sheep of the flock of Christ, members of the one true fold, followers of the Good Shepherd, their obvious sincerity, the appeal and persuasiveness 
of their doctrine, the attractiveness of their manner, their unity with one another, together, together with their talents, can all combine to make them appear to be true prophets of God. So Christ says, we must watch out. We must beware. Well, what further can we say of this? <clears throat> well, to begin with, this watching for error, however sincerely presented, requires a profound concern for the truth, and in particular, the truth revealed by Christ. There is a certain mentality that puts a higher priority on things other than truth, and without truly realising that this has been done. For instance, a person may, without realising it, and without saying as much, put a higher priority on personal sincerity, or on the possession of an inner peace, or on the experience of a certain kind of conversion, or on various charismatic gifts, than on the possession of the objective truth revealed by Jesus. Such a person loves Christ's truth, of course, but his greater focus is on other things. And so, a religious person who is contented in his religion may never genuinely set out to seek the full truth that Christ has revealed. Or again, the one without any religion at all may simply have no interest in the truth that has come from God, and so he takes no steps whatever to attain revealed truth. Others again may have a very liberal attitude to contrary opinions <coughs> and to opposite opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. And to opposite opinions in the sense of basically thinking that both are right. What is right to one may not be right to another, and that opposite opinions may be right depending on the preferences of the one holding them. All these are manifestations of the lack of concern for objective truth in religion, and in particular the truth that has been revealed by Christ. Those who lack this concern are not heeding the warning of Jesus. <clears throat> Christ is the source and the embodiment of objective religious truth. He is the one who has revealed the truth from God, and of course that truth cannot be present in its opposites. It is right and its opposite is wrong. The Catholic Church teaches that Christ left on earth a living voice with the authority to determine what is his teaching when there is presented to the faithful various opposites. That authority is found within the Catholic Church and in particular in the successor of St. Peter and the bishops acting in union with him. Thinking of our Gospel today, let us be profoundly committed to the truth of Jesus and resolved to live by it daily.